So hello, my name is Becky Hutchinson. I'm a psychological wellbeing practitioner, or a PWP for short. I work at um, NHS Talking Therapies for Anxiety and Depression. My name's Amy. Um, I am a PWP, which is a psychological wellbeing practitioner. And I work for the NHS Talking Therapies for Anxiety and Depression. Anxiety can be characterised by feelings of unease and by excessive worry. Anxiety is something that is a response due to fear. What happens is, is that our primal instinct is triggered um, and we go into something called fight or flight. So back in the caveman days, we had these instincts. So in regards to fighting, it's that having that adre adrenaline. So generally when you go into battle, um, it's going to make us do something. It makes our body prompt into action to be able to react. The other response that we have is uh, flight. So that's something that we're escaping from or, you know, we're leaving a, si a situation. Some people can get anxious when crossing the road. It's a good thing. We need to have that level of anxiety. We want to have that, what if I get one over? We want to have that feeling of unease because it's going to stop that from happening. Um, what tends to happen is when somebody is anxious, they are getting that happening all of the time. So there are different levels to anxiety. I almost call it like being on a spectrum. Um, at the very lower end of um, the spectrum, we have um, just generalised feelings of unease. We're still able to do things in different situations, but we've still got that nervousness around us. That it may be that your hands may start feeling a bit clammy, or, a bit or you're starting to feel a bit warm. It's quite normal. We might go to a job interview and feel them butterflies in the tummy. And then there's the sort of middle level, so the moderate level. So this is when, when our anxiety starts to kick in. We're starting to worry about things that um, we've got no control over. There could be lots of what ifs. That's when our sort of our fight and flight response may kick in. So we may want to leave the situation or we might just want to push through it. Right at the other end of the spectrum, um, you're getting into the realms of panic where your fight or flight system is well being um, activated. Um, you're getting full on panic attacks, your anxiety is sky high, um, some people won't leave the house. And that is, that is when the fight or flight response definitely kicks in. So you are literally running for the hills and escaping the situation or you are going to try and again battle it out or freeze and do absolutely nothing. Do you know what? With anxiety and depression, they're quite separate in their own right. Anxiety is characterised by feelings of unease, it's excessive worry, there might be um, a lot of what ifs. With depression, you have got those low fe them feelings of feeling quite low. With depression as well, you tend to almost think backwards, you go into the past. What if, it, what if my life had been like this? But if having anxiety, the likelihood is that you may have a little bit of depression behind it. So it's either one or one or the other can be on their own, but they do feed into each other. Anxiety can cause all sorts of physical symptoms, including chest pain. Um, and there is a biological reason for this. Um, when you are anxious and your fight and flight response is activated, your heart starts to beat faster. Um, the, the aim is to make your blood run through your body quicker so you can escape scenarios. But this can be maybe triggered from maybe overthinking and it could be triggered from a situation that you've been in and you may be having a similar feeling so automatically your body goes into that response. A little bit like the fight and flight so one of those triggers may be that your chest will start feeling quite tight and you start getting that chest pain. There's a lot of things that we can do. We can sort of concentrate and look into our bedroom sort of routine before going to bed. Having a warm bath, having a milky drink, making sure your um, bedroom is a nice place to go to sleep. When our thoughts are going, it automatically makes us not want to sleep when we are absolutely desperate to sleep. Almost like falling in love with your bed as well. You know, you enjoy going to bed, you enjoy getting some rest. Anxiety can be really hard in relationships. Um, people tend to avoid when they're in the relation when they're, when they're when they've got anxiety. 
Um, they will not talk to people, they tend to isolate themselves. I think the main source is being able to communicate and saying how you're feeling. But on the other side, getting the person who you're having this problem with to get them to open up as well, so you're able to work together. So it is talking about it. It's maybe giving them some psychoeducation so they can understand what's going on. Panic attacks come out of nowhere and you know normally people do think I'm going to die, I'm going to have a heart attack so I'm going to die and that's it. Um, a key thing is a knowing that they're a panic attack, they can't hurt you, you're not going to die um, and getting some basic information around panic about what it is, why it occurs um, and what's going on in your body. So what we can do to prevent that, to try and catch our thoughts first, is a technique that we use in our service called STOP, um, which is STOP. Um, taking a breath, observe what's going on and asking yourself some questions. What am I frightened of? What do I think's happening? What am I trying to predict? Um, doing that, we can look at the thinking behind it and maybe challenge it. Anxiety can go away on its own, as can low mood. Um, however, what we do know is, is that when we do things to help our anxiety or we help ourselves and we get like almost a toolkit of managing our mental health, then episodes that we get of anxiety of low mood can go away quicker. That will sort of plateau and it will go in time. And I think with therapy, especially with CBT, everything is about working and challenging yourself and changing thoughts and behaviours. It's very individual, so some people say medication works for anxiety on its own. Some people say I don't want medication, I want to be able to do the therapy. And certainly we know with the evidence base that therapies like CBT, cognitive behavioural therapy, can be just as useful as medication, even more so in some circumstances. But again, it's everyone's different. It may not agree with some people, it may not. It's not a pressured thing to have if you're needing therapy or suffering from anxiety, it can be one or the other. If it works with medication on its own, that's fine. If it works without medication, that's fine. But if you need both, that is also okay. If people are thinking about taking medication, it's always worth having a real good, open and frank conversation with the GP. In the local area, in North East Links, um, we have got a big service called Navigo, which can support secondary and primary service. So it's such as ourselves, which is um, NHS Talking Therapist for Anxiety and Depression. And we are here to offer a variety of um, support around anxiety and low mood.